registered uh, and are not able to attend the entire webinar can watch that in replay. Um, and I do want to do one more sound check. So if you can hear me, just go ahead and uh, either raise your hand and or in the question box on your GoToWebinar, just say yes or hello. Let me know where you're from, if it's cold, if it's warm. Uh, we're actually in Orlando, Florida. It's a gorgeous sunny day, about 78 degrees. Um, and uh, I wish I actually could do this webinar from outside, but the Wi-Fi is just not strong enough. Um, so I'm doing it in my office and just looking at a beautiful sunshine. So let's go ahead and get started here. It sounds like everybody can hear me. I got some Fort Lauderdale, some Kansas City. Uh, very good. <laughs> cold in Palatine, some folks in Illinois as well. So I actually grew up there, so I'm very familiar with how that works. Um, and I'm hoping you can see my screen here. I'm going to do a little bit of, on slides, and then we're going to switch over to live. I think this uh, this stuff goes better when we're seeing how it all works inside of Playster. And uh, I want to just start with this with with kind of addressing the, the, the puzzlement and the bewilderment around uh, SEO. And, and we're talking about SEO. We're talking about search engine optimization, and we'll, we'll kind of define that in a minute. But I feel like a lot of agents find themselves just lost uh, when it comes to SEO. And if, if you're like most agents, uh, you hear it, you know that it's important to your business, but you're really not sure where to start or how it all works. And quite honestly, you didn't sign up to be a real estate agent to be playing around with SEO and be playing around with your website. So that's kind of why we're here. I want to dispel some myths and, and, and just come up with a really good understanding of why this SEO is important so that your voice can be heard out in the world. So uh, before we get too deep into this, um, this is a safe zone. I'm going to be pulling up some live websites. Um, and uh, we may not like the things that we see. There may be some things that can be corrected. Um, so I want to make sure that if we do happen to pick on a profile uh, or pick up a profile, that everything that we're doing is a learning base and we're trying to make things better. Uh, we're not trying to make fun of anyone or, or um, show, uh, bring attention to some, some bad things. We're just trying to make sure it's a good learning environment for everybody. Uh, most of you, I think, have an understanding of who I am. My name is Ken Granger and uh, my slides aren't working or I'd show you that. Um, and uh, I run a branding agency here in Orlando that is Brandco. And basically what we do is we help real estate agents succeed online. Um, we do that through um, working with your Keller Williams tools and technology, your websites, doing refreshes like that. Um, and the best way for you to connect with me um, is through Facebook. I've got room for a couple hundred more friends, uh, facebook.com slash Kenneth Granger. You can also email me, uh, ken at brandco.com. We have a team of 20 creative people here that just really love helping real estate agents find their niche online and be successful. So you've got a ton of resources here. And just for housekeeping purposes, we are going to have Q&A at the end. So if you have some questions, please put them into the questions box. We'll circle back around at the end to make sure that we answer as many of those as possible. And uh, we're going to go for about 35, 40 minutes of content, and then we'll finish up with some Q&A. So hopefully you all are ready for that, and uh, let's dive into it. I want to kind of define what SEO is. And I pulled this right from, uh, right from Google when I typed in SEO definition. And it says that it's the methodology of strategies, techniques, and tactics used to increase the amount of visitors to a website by obtaining a high ranking placement in the search engine pages of, a, of the results pages of a search engine, sometimes known as the SERPs, blah, 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 blah. So I want to define it as this. Um, basically, what you're looking for in SEO is you want to get to the top of Google. And I don't think that there's a real estate agent out there that wouldn't want to be on the first page of Google for whatever area that they happen to be marketing. Um, and I want to use that as kind of what we're talking about here. How can we get a better position on Google? And sure, Bing and Yahoo and the other search engines, but if you look around, um, Google's really the one that most people are, are using today, and that's the one that we want to make sure that we have a solid presence on. And what SEO is not, it's not setting up a website and never doing anything with it to build content. And so often we hear real estate agents, um, sometimes they're just using the Keller Williams tools. Sometimes they even come to us and they, they purchase a website designed from us um, and they just let their website sit and they, they don't experience any results. They don't rise in the search engines because they've not done anything. They've not done anything to build content. Um, so it's important. SEO, you're not going to get SEO. You're not going to get found in Google unless you're building content. And number two, SEO is not hiring a company to do quote unquote SEO work for you. You know, in the old days, and SEO to me is kind of a four-letter word sometimes because there were so many companies that will call 
And you've probably received these phone calls where, the, you know, they call from a strange number, you answer it, and they say, you know, hey, Ken, this is Bob from so-and-so. I noticed you're on, not on the first page of Google. Wouldn't you like to be there? And, you know, the conversation continues that for $300 a month, they're going to do X and Y and Z, and they're going to get you there. And honestly, those things just don't work anymore. Um, unfortunately, uh, those people are still making those phone calls, but uh, you know you shouldn't you shouldn't really fall into that trap. You really cannot successfully hire out SEO at this point unless you're getting somebody who is an expert in your area. We're going to be talking a lot about content and how content is driving SEO as we get into this, and that's really what you need. You need somebody with local expertise. And hiring that out is really, really tough. So we're going to talk some of the mechanics and the principles as we go through this, but I want to make sure that everybody understands that, you know, you've got to work at this. It's not something that you just set it and forget it. It's not something that you hire somebody to do once and you're golden. It's an ongoing thing. So SEO is something that you have to do on a regular basis <clears throat> to keep your site uh, top of mind inside of Google. <clears throat> so let's take, take a kind of foundational overlay of, of the of the first step in, in starting to build some search engine optimization or some SEO on your website. And that's going to start with a great .com, a great domain name. You know, um, so many agents will, um, you know, grab, and I'll be politic as politically correct as possible, they'll grab a crappy domain name, something that just requires a lot of explanation. Um, you know, maybe they'll say Orlando Homes, the number for you, uh, .net. And, and homes is spelled H-O-M-E-Z. Uh, you know, they just come up with crazy, crazy domain names because they feel like, like quite honestly, that, that the good domain names are taken. And the basis of SEO is, is coming up with a really good domain name. Now, that's not to say that you can't have um, success with one of those kind of garbage domain names, but having a good domain name is a good foundation for your website not only from an SEO perspective, but for when you're trying to tell people how to get to your website too. If you're having to explain all the time, you know, H-O-M-E-Z, the number four sale, that's going to be frustrating and it's not going to give you a whole lot of credibility with your potential clients. So I always recommend that you start with a great domain name and that is a .com. If for whatever reason you can't get Orlando Homes for Sale .com, but Orlando Homes for Sale .net is available, I'm going to suggest that you pass. You know, most people, if you were to bump shopping carts uh, at the grocery store and, and, and you were to tell them your domain name was orlandohomesforsale.net, by the time they drove home and put their groceries away and they sat down at the computer, they're going to type in orlandohomesforsale.com. And chances are, because you couldn't buy it, that's probably another real estate agent. You just sent your potential lead there. So starting with a great domain name is important, but what's more important to the SEO equation here is that you set that domain name up properly. Now, a lot of times people will purchase a domain name from GoDaddy or wherever it happens to be, and they'll call up that service provider like GoDaddy and say, hey, I got this domain name, and I want to forward it to my place or website. And um, they take that quite literally when you say you want to forward your domain name. And what they do is they actually forward the domain name to your temporary website, which means that you cannot earn SEO. And I'm going to show you some examples of that when we go live here. You do not want to forward your domain name, and you do not want to mask your domain name. These are two very kind of prevalent options inside of GoDaddy or most of the places where you can do a domain registration. You don't want to do that. Uh, you want to set it up with a C name. And when we get inside a place to here in a minute, I will show you how that needs to be done. So the idea is that you purchase a domain name, and you set it up with a C name in order for you to be successful online. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump out of our slide deck here and show you what that looks like inside of Playster because this is extremely important for you to be successful. Um, so, you know, you do not actually have a login to Playster. You have to log in through your MyKW account. And when you do, it will bring you to this page here. And I've got a few extra websites uh, loaded up here. You may only have one. Totally fine. But what I want to show you in here um, underneath your um, edit site is how you set up your domain name. And it's towards the bottom of the page here, and this is where you can actually add a custom domain name. So I'm going to go ahead and click that here, and you'll see what I'm looking at. I'm working on, on Playster, a domain that's called site 
four nine 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 one eight blah 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 your real my real estate platform dot com and that's the temporary domain name for your website. Here with Keller Williams, you got a temporary domain name maybe with a KW on it. It might say KenGranger.KW.com. Now those domains are meant to be temporary and not really marketed. Uh, they're there just to kind of as a placeholder. What we want is for you to set up your custom domain. Now in this case, we purchased the domain name searchorlandohomes.com and we have set it up in such a way that it is going to be set up with a C name. Now, um, every hosting provider, domain name provider is different on how you do that. Uh, on the right hand side here, I want to show you this and I've got videos that I'll, I'll, I'll um, send out after this webinar. But I, what I want to show you on the right hand side is that there are articles for almost every single domain registrar out there on how to set up your website with a C name. Okay, so there's no reason to do a forwarding. There's no reason for you to lose out on the SEO because the re what really happens here is whatever the .com is, is what gets the SEO. So for example, if you just forwarded your domain over to myrealestateplatform.com, you would be giving all of your search engine optimization to myrealestateplatform.com versus we want the SEO on our domain. We want credit on searchorlandohomes.com. Okay, so the idea is here is we want all of the credit, all of the work that we're doing in optimizing our website to be on our domain. I can't tell you how many agents spend um, countless hours building pages, writing blog posts, and they leave that on their temporary domain and they end up really with no value, um, no long-term um, gain because they're not putting it on their domain. So most important thing for you to do is choose a great domain name and then set that domain name up as a C name. Do not forward it, do not mask it, set it up as a C name just as I showed you through here. Uh, and if you have questions on your particular um, provider, how to do that, there's step-by-step -step instructions there. And I'll be happy to send out a video to everyone that registered at the end of this to show you how to do that um, inside of GoDaddy. So great domain name is priority number one. Um, priority number two is that you've gotta come from contribution. Uh, the idea of having this website in today's day and age, everybody's got listings. If we look at the Trulia, the Zillow's, the Realtor.coms of the world, they all have the listing. What they don't have is the local expertise. They don't have the knowledge of the real estate market. They don't have the information about the shopping center at the corner that, you know, the husband and wife have owned that Italian restaurant for so many years and, you know, it's a neighborhood favorite. They don't have you know, the kids go play at this particular playground. They don't have the, you know, movie in the park information. They don't have any of the lifestyle, what it's like to live there. And you all do. And the idea of having a website and starting to build some search engine optimization is that you're positioning yourself as the expert in that community. Which means that you have to really, number one, come from contribution, but you've got to bring content into a pretty hyper-local market. You've probably heard that term before, hyper-local. You gotta be local. You cannot be all things to all people and find yourself successful from the search engine perspective. You gotta be an expert in one area. Now, you can be an expert at one, build SEO there, and then move on to the next and move on to the next. That's perfectly acceptable, but you have to pick an area, pick a farm, pick an area that you can dominate and do that successfully and come from contribution. And that content's got to be unique content, unique local content. We don't want you copying and pasting stuff. I can't tell you how many agents have subscribed, and I won't name the companies, but subscribe to services where for $99 a month, they get blog articles that are pushed into their website. Well, when I do a search on those blog articles, they're on two or three or 4,000 other websites. That's not going to get you any credibility. That's not going to position you as a subject matter expert. Um, it could actually hurt you because Google doesn't really like this idea of duplicate content. So you got to make sure that the content is yours and that you're not copying and pasting it from somewhere else. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, how to build this content and where it should go in your website and then what the benefit of that is. So, you know, it really is all about creating content and, and relevant content to what your, what your potential clients are searching for. So if you're selling homes in Orlando here, you should be talking about what it's like to live in Orlando um, or maybe even a smaller part of Orlando like Hunter's Creek or Baldwin Park. You want to you wanna be an expert in the smaller areas of your city um, and as your city as well. 
And, and there's two ways that you can um, use Playster and use any website platform, quite honestly, to um, do that, to be successfully um, indexed in the search engine uh, with your content. And that's by building area pages and blogging. I'm going to show you how that works inside of Playster and why these things are important. So um, we were in a, a little bit earlier this uh, search Orlando home. So we'll continue using that um, as our demo today. Um, so this, uh, this um, admin panel has been kind of, for lack of a better term, dumbed down. Um, so it makes it very simple for you to find where you need to go in order to create content. And there's two types of content that I want to focus on today. Um, and the reason is these two pieces uh, will give you relevancy and leverage. The first one that we're going to talk about is what's called an areas page. And the reason why area pages are important is because they are a special type of page on your website that will leverage the MLS. So um, when I say leverage the MLS, what it does is it takes your, your content and then it adds all of the listings in that particular area to your page. So for one page of effort, for lack of a better term, for you writing one page, you could have 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 pages indexed in your website. And I want to show you how that works. I'm going to actually just build an area page for us live. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit the plus here. And um, we'll do an area of Orlando that's called Baldwin Park. I'm going to put test at the end of it just so I know which one is my uh, kind of my demo test. Now, notice what happened here. It created a page on my website, and the address of the page says Baldwin Park test, right? I could put Baldwin Park homes, Baldwin Park, whatever. So this is actually step number one of having some good SEO on your website is that it created the URL in a very friendly way so that Google knows what it is. Uh, it's not some crazy bunch of numbers. It's not page one, two, three, four. It's Baldwin Park test, right? We can say Baldwin Park Homes. It'll make a little bit more sense. We'll change that there. So notice when I change it, the slug also changes as well. So this does a great job of creating nice search engine friendly URLs. And that's one of the advantages of using Playster for your content. Now, I told you a little bit earlier, the reason why area pages are important is because they leverage content. They leverage the MLS. And that leverage is right here in these two sections. It says type of area and name of area. Now, you can create area pages as big as um, a county, a state, a city, a postal code. In this case, what I'm talking about, Baldwin Park. Baldwin Park is, is a neighborhood. So I'm going to drop down neighborhood. And if I click here, we'll see all of the different neighborhoods after that loads here. Let me give that a second. <clears throat> Wouldn't be a tech webinar without a spinning wheel. There we go. Um, so now this will list all of the neighborhoods in your MLS. Now notice we've got a bunch of just garbage in here. That's because this particular MLS allows agents to type in garbage in the neighborhood field. So somebody typed in the neighborhood zero and zero zero and all this other kind of crap, which sucks, um, but it just it is what it is. Uh, to find your area, you can just start typing. So we're talking about Baldwin Park, so I'll just start typing Baldwin Park. And then we'll see here it is down in the B's. And I'll go ahead and click on that. And now we're starting to build our area page around Baldwin Park. Okay? We can upload photos if we want to do slideshows, kind of like the home page of your website. You have the option for slideshows. You can certainly do that there. Um, and then the reason the, the area pages are unique and separate from other pages, number one is this area up here for setting the um, IDX. But it also has the content broken down into three different sections. You have a headline, a subheadline, and then another subheadline. So we've got three different areas to talk about Baldwin Park on our website. And it's my recommendation that you kind of start soft. Like I don't want to go like right in for the kill and start selling right away. I would probably start with something about you know what it's like to live in Baldwin Park. So I might say something in my headline like uh, the Baldwin Park lifestyle. And inside here we would talk about everything that there is to do in Baldwin Park. There, like there are parks. There are lakes. Don't blog like this. You, you kind of get the idea. You'd actually expand on that. You'd talk about the different types of park and the different parks of lake, different types of lakes. Um, and it's great to live here. Right? So you're going to do a paragraph or two 
about what the Baldwin Park lifestyle is like. Um, in our second section, you know, um, it's very popular for people to want to know about school districts and what, um, you know, what the schools are like there. So I might have the second section about uh, Baldwin Park schools. Okay. And then I would talk about, you know, there are two schools, uh, one elementary and one high school. You'd name them. You'd talk about how awesome they are. Um, you could put some statistics in here if you wanted to, like there are, you know, 2,000 students at the school, but we want this data to be evergreen. So I would encourage you not to put too much statistics in there that would change. So you might say the school was built in 2015. That's cool because that's never going to change. Um, but you wouldn't want to put, you know, data that um, could potentially change over time. We want to build these pages and kind of set it and forget it. And then, uh, so that's our second section. And then in our third section, um, we can do, uh, now we can start to get more towards the real estate market. We could start to give information about what uh, the market is like. So we could say something to the effect of uh, Baldwin Park home values and market data. All right. And in here, again, we don't want to be super specific, so we have to change that all the time. We want to talk about how many homes there are in Baldwin Park, who the builders were in Baldwin Park. Um, you know, maybe you can talk about uh, the commute to downtown things that are very generic and non-data driven, um, but still give an idea of what the market is like and why people would choose to live in Baldwin Park. So um, non-specific uh, market data would go here. Again, we just don't want to have to come back here and edit this every week. So the idea is that we've got three sections of a couple paragraphs each. So we've got the local expertise. When I was talking over here on the slide, you know, it's all about positioning yourself as a local expert. This is what's doing that, all right? So we're positioning ourselves as a local expert by putting this content out there. Now, we can upload pictures if we want to. We can actually even embed videos. I don't know how many of you, anybody here using videos in your, um, uh, in your marketing efforts? Seems like a couple people are. So um, the, the videos are really important for a couple of reasons. One, I think it creates a, a connection with people. Um, and two, I think it gives you, well, I know it gives you a longer time on site. People will spend more time on your website when there's a video there. So I'm just going to pretend like uh, these are our videos. I'm not encouraging you ever to go borrow somebody else's video or steal somebody else's video. I'm going to assume that you created a video on Baldwin Park Schools. And let's hope that there's a video there. Uh, we'll just go here to videos and see. Uh, let's see. Let's pretend that this was the video that you created. Let's find one on YouTube. Let's see what we got. Nothing on YouTube. That's crazy. Let's add YouTube here. Let's see if we can find some. There we go. Let's pretend like this was a video that you uploaded about the Baldwin Park High School uh, to YouTube. With Playster, all you have to do is copy the address of the video. You do not have to do embed codes or any kind of iframes or any of that stuff that you used to have to do when you were building websites in the past. Playster's made it really, really simple. You just copy the address of the video. Again, I'm not uh, telling you to copy somebody else's. We're going to assume that it's yours. And all you have to do is paste that right in line with your content. Oops, let me get that out of there. Try that copy and paste one more time. We'll actually go visit the video. There we go. So we'll copy this address. And then we paste it right inside of Placer. And what it does is it embeds the video automatically for you. I must not have copied it right the first time. It embeds that video automatically for you. So it gives you um, uh, higher viewership and higher retention to the people that are on your website. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this page so you can get an idea of what happens when we create an area page. So um, the area page that we created was uh, what, Baldwin Park Homes? Let's see, I'm only gonna be on the last page here. Yeah, Baldwin Park Homes. So let me copy this address and then go look at that page that we just created. All right, so we can see that uh, a lot of people get caught up on this. You'll see how this is the temporary domain name that we talked about before. Because I added that custom domain in, it's right there, the custom domain search Orlando Homes. 
area, Baldwin Park Homes. So we got a nice search engine friendly URL. And we can see here that we've got our title, our three different areas of content, Baldwin Park Lifestyle, Baldwin Park Schools, and then Baldwin Park Home Values and Market Data. And the reason why I suggested you do these as area pages is this. So there are now um, listings in Baldwin Park on this page. So I created one page of content. Okay, So I got one landing page, if you will, one additional kind of thumbs up plus one from Google by creating this page. But I also got 51 different properties and 51 different homes are now indexed on my website. So for example, this property at 1648 Harrison Avenue, I now have a page on my website for 1648 Harrison Avenue. You see that? Baldwin Park, 1648 Harrison Avenue. So what area pages do is they allow me to do tremendous leverage. So I've got one page of content here, but I actually got 52 pages of credit with Google. I got one page of credit for my um, area page, and I've got 51 pages of credit for all of the listings that are attached to that area. So I did that pretty small. I did that on Baldwin Park. If I were to change this over to, um, let's say, a postal code, I don't even know what the postal code is for Baldwin Park, but we'll pretend like we do. Uh, 32801, I think it is, or somewhere around there. So 328, where are we at? 32801. I think that's downtown Orlando, but close enough. So if I do that with a postal code and save this and go refresh my website, I could write all about the zip code 32801, and now I have 214 pages in the index. I can go even further and I can write all about my city. Okay, so let's go back into that blog post that I was just on and let's change it from Baldwin Park to a locality. Locality is city. I don't know why they called it that, but it's city. And uh, let's say we wanted to do an area page for the city of Orlando, which kind of encompasses a lot. Uh, scroll too fast there. So let's say Orlando and we'll save this page, one page of content. Let's see how many listings we get. 5,714 listings by creating one area page. So I have one area page pretending that this is about Orlando, but I got 5,700 pages of content in the Google search results. And this is powerful because every single one of these listings now, <clears throat> um, 8977 Houston Place, that is going to be a page on my website. So if someone were to be driving by that address, now that's a pretty interesting parcel, but if somebody were to be driving by the address and see that for sale sign, they're not gonna write down the phone number of the agent on the for sale sign. They're gonna know the address. They're gonna go back to Google. They're gonna type in the address and my website is gonna show up in the Google search results as, a, as the result of doing this um, area page. So this is really, really powerful leverage. And I wanna show you what that looks like if you do this over a period of time and how you can tell if you're being successful at growing your page count in the Google search engine and the Google index. And you can do this with your domain name or you can do this with any domain name. But if you head over to Google um, and just type into the search bar, just like you were gonna be doing a search for something uh, like Orlando Real Estate, type in site colon and your domain name. So in this case, the domain that we're working with was search Orlando homes.com and what you'll see is the number of pages that you have in the Google search results. So this particular domain name, this is a Placer website, um, has 5,460 pages in the Google search results. I can promise you he did not type content for 5,460 pages, he did a few area pages. In fact, if we go back and look, taking my test aside, let's take my test out of there, uh, this was done with 20 area pages. So in 20 area pages, he was able to build 5,000 landing pages, 5,400 landing pages into his website. And you can see, you know, his blog, we can see the listings. And as we start to get a little bit deeper into this, we're going to start to see all of the different properties, 11, 12, 07 Kimberly Avenue in Inglewood. So all of these are now landing pages on his website. You know, I think there's a common misconception among people when they, um, they set their website up. They kind of expect everyone to visit the home page, and that's not always true. A lot of times people come into an interior page, right? Like, 
if you uh, if you hand somebody your business card and they type in your website, certainly they're going to see the home page. But if they're doing a Google search, the chance of them going to the home page is pretty low. They're probably going to end up in an interior page. And I use the example of like shopping for a Weber grill. If I'm looking for a Weber grill and I type in Weber grill into Google. Um, and let's see who's got it. Home Depot. Okay, let's see. We'll go a little bit further down here. Uh, these are all Weber. Amazon, for example. I'm not going to go to the home page of Amazon when I click on this link. I'm going to go to the Weber Grills page on Amazon, right? So it's the same thing with your real estate website. If somebody's searching for real estate in Baldwin Park, they're not going to end up at the home page of your website. They're going to end up at the area page of your website. So if you're not building area pages, you are completely missing the opportunity to be successful in some search engine optimization. So that's areas number one area pages. So I want you to do as many of those as you can, 5, 10, 15, 20, um, and they can be small, they can be neighborhoods, they can be zip codes. You could do one for your city if you want to grab, you know, those four or 5,000, however many listings you have in your city. But the key is that you have some good content above those listings, and that content has to be unique, and that content has to be relevant, and it can't be something that you copied or pasted. It's got to be something uh, that you know your local expertise about the market. So that's areas you should create at least a half a dozen or so, as many as you can for the areas that you want to dem you, the areas that you want to dominate in your market. The other thing that we were looking at here um, on the slide when we're talking about content is blogging. And Playster has made it like super simple for you to blog. You'll see right here um, along the top it says blog posts. Um, admittedly, this agent's not doing a great job of blogging. There's a couple of blogs in here, but um, each of you gets four out of the box. They're kind of default blog posts. Remember, everybody's got the same one, so they're really junky content, right? I think one of them's even called moving to the big city. So if you don't live in a big city, like, it doesn't even make sense. Why would you have that on your website? My suggestion is to remove those. Yeah, here it is, relocating to the big city. My suggestion is to remove those and actually put some good blog posts there about what's going on in your market. Um, so he actually did add a couple of different blog posts down here. Um, the biggest reason empty homes do not sell. That's actually a pretty good blog post title. And you can see, um, you know, if somebody were to type in why my home doesn't sell, you've got some good keywords here. <laughs> Chances of them sound is actually pretty good. And then you'll see um, that he's got some content in here. Looks pretty simple to read. Got some quotes. Um, this is not a lot of work. This probably took him a half hour or so to write a blog post to get that content in there. And I bet most of you could write a blog article on why empty homes don't sell. And you could probably write a blog article on what interest rates are going to mean to home buyers. And you could probably write an article on, um, you know, why the, there are multiple offers on most homes in your area. So blog content is something that is um, important on a regular basis to get in there. And uh, the more the merrier. Uh, if you can blog on a daily basis, that would be amazing. If you could blog on a weekly basis, you're probably doing better than 95% of the real estate agents in the market. Okay? So you just have to do a little bit better than the next guy. And uh, if you've taken blogging classes before, they've probably given you some uh, tips on how you should formulate your blog posts, and I can certainly go into some of those as another topic. But the idea is that you start um, doing anything out there. I have seen people rank on page one of Google with a single sentence about winterizing the pool. Apparently, if you don't winterize your pool in Minneapolis, um, some of you guys up in the cold probably know this, if you don't take the water out and winterize your pool, it basically freezes into a block of ice and it, like cracks and pops out of the ground. I um, had a real estate agent who took a photo of that. They saw it in a foreclosed home. And if you were to Google winterize your pool, she was on the first page of Google for months because she had a single sentence there because no one else was talking about it. So, you know, it, you don't have to write a ton of content. You just have to be consistent and just start. You will get better over time, I promise. So the two areas of content that I want you to focus on are going to be your area pages and then your blog posts. And if you can blog on a weekly basis, time block it. Time block it in your lead generation time, 15 minutes, once a week. Everyone can do that. When we hear people say, you know, give us their excuses of why they're not blogging, they say they don't have time, they don't know what to write about, they don't know how to do it. Well, I took all of those away. Find 15 minutes in your time block. I just told you some examples of what you can write about, and now you know how to do it. It's as simple as just going into Playster, 
clicking this little plus and writing your blog post. All right, so simple stuff there. All right, a couple more slides here, and then uh, we'll get into our Q&A. Uh, the meta titles and descriptions, I kind of skipped over those in the two sections that we were looking at, but these are important pieces to um, SEO and to kind of HEO, you know, human optimization of your website. Uh, let's go back to uh, one of those pages for a minute here. We'll go back to one of the area pages like Baldwin Park. <clears throat> And uh, this is actually the page that the agent created, so we can see how well he did here with his content. Got some good stuff in there. If we go down to the bottom, you'll see under SEO, this idea of meta title and meta description. And what those two things are, they're kind of indicators to Google and the world what your page is about. So we had some indicators before. We had the kind of uh, URL, the title of our page. We've got some kind of cues here, but the description and the title are important to Google and they're important to have some keywords in there. So if we're talking about Baldwin Park, you're going to want to have Baldwin Park in your title and your description. So it makes, makes sense, right? If you want Google to pick you up for that, you would put those two things in there. But I want to show you where those actually come into play from the human perspective. So if we were to look for Baldwin Baldwin Park Homes for Sale is a kind of a common search that I think uh, somebody who is potentially buying a home in Baldwin Park would look for. Uh, you see here we've got a few ads, and then we've got the organic search results. So the page title is what's here in blue. So whatever you put here in the page title, when you do get found in Google, will show up in blue. And the description, which is this section right here, is going to be this area right here, the little kind of text in black. So it's important that you write these page titles and descriptions for a human being to read them because when we get a, you know, a visitor here, we want them to actually click on this stuff. So you shouldn't just put a bunch of garbage in here. You should write something uh, compelling. In this case, it says Baldwin Park in Orlando, Florida has been carefully planned to create a definite sense of community a traditional neighborhood development. Like I might actually click on that. I'd probably read that because it's a compelling message versus some of these that are just, you know, stuff with Baldwin Park, Baldwin Park, they're too salesy. I might not click on those. So the page uh, title or meta tag title is, is what's in blue and the description is what is in black on the bottom. And these two things do a couple things for you. They indicate to Google what the page is about and then they get human beings real live people, it compels them to actually click on your post and click on your listings. And again, all of these here, if I click on this, it's not going to take me to the home page. It's going to take me to the Baldwin Park page, right? So it takes me to the area pages or the landing pages that I built on, uh, on my PlayStore website. So titles and descriptions are important. Uh, those are on every single page, including your blog posts, including your area pages. And then there's also one on your main website, site settings. If you go down to um, site info, you'll see this is where you can kind of set your theme and put your logo, all those types of things. At the very bottom of your site info, you can put that as well. And you'll notice here the site title, the meta title, is also what's up at the top of the address bar. So you see right here, Orlando Homes cutoff, obviously. Um, but that is going to be um, in the top tab of your browser. So these uh, titles and descriptions are very important to you, and um, you, you have a comment on those, about five characters for a title and 155 characters or so. Uh, sitemap. So the last thing that I want to share with you guys, and this is huge leverage, but it doesn't matter if you're not doing um, any of the other things that I suggested, building area pages, um, doing your blog posts but it is a very powerful tool for you. So I'm gonna go back to our website here. Um, and let's see if it'll let me go that way. It won't. I might have to log back in and see how I can get back to it. Not playing nice. There used to be a link to where I can get back to sites. Here we go. Um, each one of your websites actually has what's called a sitemap. And what a sitemap does is it creates a list of every single page on your website. So, <clears throat> in fact, this one here created 117 different sitemaps. 
because a lot of these different property site maps have more than one property in there. So if I go take a look at this one, for example, all of these um, listings, 150 of them, all of these listings are in this site map. So what a site map does is it basically uh, creates a, um, a web or a, a list of all of the pages that Google could potentially index for you. And when you submit this site map over to Google, you're kind of kickstarting the um, SEO process. And Google's going to rate you on how well you did. So if you, you've got lots of good content on there and you give them a site map, they're going to give you a heck of a lot more respect than if you do just the site map on its own, which is why I said you got to make sure you're doing those other things first. Um, but the sitemap actually is just this address here. Everybody's sitemap is exactly the same. Sitemap underscore index dot XML. And basically what you need to do is you need to create an account with um, Google Search Console. It used to be called Google Webmasters. And I'm going to send you a video on how to do this. I won't, we won't have time to actually show you how to create the account, um, but there'll be a follow-up video that will show you how to do that. Um, basically, all you do is you come over to Google after you set this account up, <clears throat> and under crawl, you can submit a sitemap. And um, it's as simple as clicking this red button here and then pasting your sitemap. So like I said, it's just the sitemap index XML. I come over to Google, and I paste that in there. And what will happen is over the next couple of days, Google will go pick up um, all of those pages and start growing that page count. You know, when I did that site colon on Search Orlando, we saw the 5,400 or so pages. Um, that's what happens here. So through a combination of me building the area pages or this agent building the area pages, and then um, adding the site map, they got 5,400 pages in the search results. Now, I want to show you this. This website, um, searchorlandohomes.com, is actually – his Playster website that we've gone in and uh, done a refresh on. But we actually did the same thing on his uh, e-agency website as well. And his e-agency website is Search Orlando. So we've got both of those domains. But I want to show you the difference. So, you know, we already did the site colon on searchorlandohomes.com. We saw he had 5,400 results. But if we do that same thing on Search Orlando, he's only got 729, okay? So the reason why I want to point this out is this is a huge, huge, huge benefit for you to move over to Playster and to start building out these area pages. You didn't have the ability to do that over on eAgency, and it actually cost you a lot of time and a lot of effort, and now you've got that ability. So if you've been thinking about moving to Playster, you really need to do that because of this leverage. It's ridiculous amounts of leverage. So that's the end of the content that we have here, and I saw a bunch of questions flying through here. So let me go ahead and um, address some of these as a group. Um, and again, these are being recorded, so if there are any questions that I don't get to, um, I will make sure that we get to them uh, and send you an email as well. Um, so uh, someone asked, is it worth going to pro sites, and what do you get extra for the price? I think that's probably a good question to um, address with the group here. The uh, placer has I'm assuming that you're talking about the upgrade to Playster, um, has something that they call uh, an engagement bundle. <clears throat> and basically what the engagement bundle does is it gives you a few extra tools that are pretty powerful. Um, <clears throat> number one, it gives you a home value form. So if you're expecting to collect seller leads, uh, that's part of the engagement bundle, so I think that's worthwhile. It gives you advanced lead capture. So uh, under normal lead capture settings, you either have uh, passively capture leads or aggressively capture leads. Uh, with the engagement bundle, you also get the ability to set up some custom lead capture options, which is really powerful. Um, and then it also gives you, um, uh, under pages, uh, what's called an IDX page. You notice when I made the area page, it only allowed me to do one area, like one city, one zip code, one neighborhood. The IDX pages, if you have the upgrade, the, the engagement bundle, and, and you create an uh, IDX page, I think this has the upgrade. It looks like it does. Um, you can add as many criteria as you want. So if you want to add uh, bedrooms, bathrooms, cities, zip codes, you can add as many criteria as you want with the IDX pages. So those are the four things that are in the engagement bundle. 
Um, and I think that there's there's value to that if you're going to leverage and use those things. So um, your mileage will vary. If you're using it, I think it's great. Um, if you're not really building out the pages, you might not see as much value. Um, questions, difference between the area page and IDX page. Yep, uh, area page will only allow you to do one criteria. IDX page will give you many criteria. <clears throat> and area pages are free. IDX page are part of the upgrade. Uh, let's see. Someone asked if I could uh, elaborate the different uh, name of area fields. In other words, what's the difference between region and locality? So that's in the area section here. As you're building these out, the types of areas, I believe, what they were asking for. So <clears throat> county is pretty straightforward. Uh, region is your state. Locality is your city. And postal is your zip code, neighborhood, or community. That's pretty straightforward. Yes to videos, love seeing all that. Uh, this video will be available to a later date. Uh, question is, what if your neighborhood has several villages or sub-neighborhoods? Is there a way to choose more than one? Uh, you would need to do that through your uh, IDX page. You wouldn't be able to do it through an area page. Uh, how, long should you, uh, how long before you see the pages indexing? If your domain name is set up properly and you set up that sitemap, you should see it within you should see it within 30 days, but usually a week or two, you're going to start to see that number popping up. Uh, what did I do to find out how many pages were created? I actually just clicked over here <clears throat> on areas, and I saw 20. So there was no secret to that. Those 20 pages yielded him uh, 5,040 results. Uh, let's see. Are area pages better than IDX pages? They are because they have content on top of them. The IDX pages do not. Um, so we're getting, we actually went over our time here by a couple minutes, um, but I did record this, so we will um, go ahead and send the link out to everyone that registered. We will also put the recording up on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Um, if you have questions about how any of this stuff works, feel free to shoot me an email, ken at brandco.com. And if you're thinking about moving your website over to Playster or you'd like to get us to um, redesign your website, reach out to us. We've got some specials here for the end of the year. And uh, hopefully this was valuable and y'all learned something. Um, have a great holiday, and we will see you early in 2017, hopefully with a much higher page count uh, in the Google search engines because you practice some of the stuff today. So have a good holiday, everyone, and thanks for your time. Take care.